What is the mythical southern continent that was believed to exist for centuries? And how it influenced the discovery of Australia and Antarctica? Hello and welcome to GeoStory, the channel where we explore the fascinating stories behind the geography of our planet. Today, we are going to talk about Terra Australis. Imagine a world map where the northern hemisphere is full of landmasses, but the southern hemisphere is mostly empty, except for a few islands. How would you balance such a map? Wouldn't it tip over? That's what many ancient and medieval thinkers wondered. And they came up with a solution, there must be a huge continent in the south. Opposite to Europe and Asia, that would keep the world in equilibrium. They called it Terra Australis, which means southern land in Latin. The idea of Terra Australis dates back to at least the 5th century BC, when the Greek philosopher Pythagoras proposed that the earth was spherical and symmetrical. Later, Aristotle and Ptolemy also supported this theory, and added some details based on their observations and calculations. But how did they know that such a land existed? If no one had ever seen it or reached it, well, they didn't. They just assumed it based on logic and speculation. They also used some clues from travelers and explorers who reported seeing islands or coastlines in the southern seas, for instance. Some ancient sources mention a land called Taprabane, which was probably Sri Lanka or Sumatra, but was sometimes confused with a larger continent. Another example is the legend of St. Brendan, an Irish monk who supposedly sailed to a paradise island in the Atlantic Ocean. Around the 6th century AD, some people thought that this island was part of Terra Australis. The idea of Terra Australis persisted throughout the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, even though some scholars and cartographers began to question its existence and size. Some maps show Terra Australis as a single continent that covered almost half of the globe, while others depicted it as a series of smaller islands or regions with different names, such as Magellanica, Brassel, or Beach. Some maps even connected Terra Australis with North America or South America, creating a continuous landmass around the South Pole. The exploration of the Pacific Ocean by European sailors in the 16th and 17th centuries gradually revealed the true nature of Terra Australis. They discovered new lands such as New Zealand, New Guinea, and Vanuatu, but none of them matched the description or location of the mythical continent. They also realized that there was no landmass south of Tierra del Fugo, the southern tip of South America. Finally, in 1773, Captain James Cook became the first person to cross the Antarctic Circle and prove that there was no habitable land beyond it. Nevertheless, Cook did not rule out the existence of a polar continent. He recorded in his diary, I strongly believe that there is a landmass near the pole that produces most of the ice that covers this immense southern ocean. He was correct, there was a continent hidden under the ice. But it was much smaller and colder than anyone had expected, it was Antarctica. The final continent to be found and explored by humans. So what happened to Terra Australis? Well, it faded away from maps and mines as a scientific concept. But it left a legacy in history and culture. For example, the name Australia comes from Terra Australis. As it was originally applied to New Holland, the Dutch name for the western part of Australia. The name was later adopted by Matthew Flinders, an English navigator who circumnavigated Australia in 1803 and proposed that it should be called a name more agreeable to the ear. Another example is the Southern Cross constellation, which was used by sailors as a guide to find their way in the Southern Hemisphere. The constellation is also featured on several national flags and symbols of countries in Oceania. Terra Australis may have been a myth, but it was also a dream, a dream of finding new lands, new peoples, new wonders. A dream that inspired generations of adventurers and visionaries to explore the unknown and expand our horizons, a dream that still lives on in our imagination and curiosity. Thank you for watching GeoStory. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more amazing stories about our planet. See you next time.